I'm Kai and thank you for joining us for the third episode of our video series on student job hunting. Here at Employment for Students, we have years of experience helping more than 18 million school, college and university students find part-time work, holiday jobs, internships and year-out opportunities and graduate jobs. This video series will hopefully give you some tips and insights on how to land your ideal student job. Last week we covered the best way to prepare your CV and covering letter and this week we're going to be talking about interviews. There are a myriad of options regarding what you can do to prepare and in this episode we'll talk you through what you can do pre-interview, different interview styles and formats, tips and technique for the main event and some questions you can expect to receive. So, good place to start, let's go through what you can do at the very beginning. to interview, first of all, congratulations. Although everyone at E4S understands that, some of you might be thinking this is about the time to start panicking. By all means don't. If you've been invited to interview, that means they're interested in you and that's half the work done. All you need to do is justify their interest and adequate preparation will go a long way to enabling a convincing and proficient interview. First and foremost, research the company and the role. They're hiring for a reason and a bit of reconnoitering can help you tailor your response to pull across why your experience would best benefit the company. That means more than a cursory glance at their website. Check their company background, the size of the company, how many people they employ, the company ethos, and if possible, inform yourself of your interviewer's professional background. Websites like Companies House and LinkedIn can be invaluable for this. In addition to researching the company, Investigate the current trends and affairs of the sector that you're entering. This will give you a greater understanding of the kind of work you'll undertake in the role you're hoping to enter, and again, tailor your responses to relevant scenarios. If you're expected to give a presentation or perform a written exam, find out what resources will be available and familiarise yourself with them before you're expected to use them. On a similar note, commit the details of your CV to memory You'll likely cite periods of your working and personal history throughout the interview and pausing to look up how long you worked with Company A or what your English Lit GCSE mark was won't look too impressive. You should also adequately prepare your journey to ensure that you do not arrive late, especially if you're travelling by public transport. Obviously getting there early gives a much better first impression than turning up late, especially if your interviewer is expecting multiple candidates throughout the day, and they most likely are. This is just a basic overview of some of the things that you can do to prepare. They'll likely inform you of other areas more specific to your needs that you can read up on, but this should give you some good starting ground. Something you'll want to be informed of is how you're going to be interviewed. There are numerous interview formats, each intended to test your capabilities in particular circumstances. Fortunately, you should be informed or at least be able to ask what kind of interview you're being invited to prior to the event. Firstly, you may be invited to a telephone interview. These are usually primers before a face-to-face -face interview, but you'll be allowed a few allowances such as being able to have your notes in front of you or taking you to naked if that's what floats your boat. Telephone interviews are not likely to be as technical or intensive as face-to-face -face meetings, but obviously they are looking to judge your phone manner and ability to communicate succinctly. You're still looking to impress them, so don't let your guard down. Face-to-face -face interviews come in several permutations. One-to-one -one and panel interviews are among the most common and are reasonably straightforward. We'll talk about what kind of dialogue you're hoping to establish later on. More unusual formats include the group interview, in which candidates will be invited in one block and usually involves performing group tasks to determine how well you perform as part of a team and to test your communication skills. Creative and digital-centric industries often utilise portfolio interviews, where the focus is on elaborating on the content you've chosen to spotlight and a more specialised example-led discussion on the process of your work. For the most part, regardless of the kind of interview you're invited to, the outcome is the same. They want to know why you, above anyone else, should be offered a job. And we'll move on to discuss how best you can put that forward. Knowing the details of the company and the kind of interview you've been 
invited to. You can easily prepare for what you want to put across in the interview itself. Perhaps most importantly, remember that an interview is a conversation and you should aim for a 50-50 dialogue. Interviewers are often trained to aim towards 30-70, however it is your intention to involve the interviewer in the conversation to areas where you can play to your strengths. Rather obviously, aim for positive interaction. Establish a rapport, ask if the interviewer would like more detail on a response you provided. Ask questions of your own to show engagement and interest. It's a conversation, not a monologue. With this in mind, prepare your delivery. Rehearsal can be useful when covering questions expected to come up and practicing until you have the right words and can deliver them without hesitating, getting flustered or at a nervous or erratic pace will be all the more convincing. Note this does not mean learning an unwavering script and being able to provide information on the fly can impress, but you can at least remind yourself of the details and prepare a best way to report them. We mentioned this briefly before but being invited to interview means that they are already interested in offering you the position and they're interested in listening to you sell your qualities. So you can easily enter the interview with a positive outlook. Further preparation and practice will help with your confidence and self-esteem. Obviously we can't give you a script to learn prior to the interview. The questions are going to alter depending on the position you're going for, the interviewer's style, and indeed their initial impressions on you. However, there are a few questions that are almost guaranteed to turn up in one form or another. One early, if not the first question you're going to receive is, tell me about yourself. Seemingly innocuous, this is often the first pitfall for interviewees. It's easy to ramble or move the discussion into irrelevant areas. Try to keep your answer brief and germane. The interviewer is looking for your background and education, any work history and recent experiences, Keep the details connected with your professional life. You can talk about hobbies and interests later on. Although many people slip up, this is an easy question to prepare for, so don't despair. Another common question is, where do you see yourself in five years' time? One of the rare questions you are afforded leeway to be a little vague, the question is intended to unveil your ambition and gauge interest in the current role. A safe answer often espoused is to express your desire for fresh challenges and opportunities and how this position would enable them. But be mindful that the internet is rife with guides, you are watching one now after all. Many of which advise on this response and interviewers may pick up on the inherent meaninglessness of this answer. One other question you can expect to hear is, what are your weaknesses? This is still a question many applicants fall short on. The intention of the question isn't to slip you up, but to gauge how you approach any shortcomings. Answers such as, I work too hard or I give too much into my work, tell the interviewee very little. Similarly, this is not the right time to adopt a devout dedication to the truth and speaking on your lack of time management or the amount of stationery that goes missing whenever you join an office is going to earn you a fast invitation to the door. Pick something simple to say like your capacity for public speaking and importantly, what you are doing to correct it. One last commonly asked question, why should you get the job? Much like telling about yourself, this should be answered succinctly with a mind to address your unique qualifications. Take into consideration any stated specifications or requirements of the job description and time the relevance of your own skills and experience. Again, avoid taking too much time to answer this question to ensure that you keep the interviewee's attention. some tips on handling yourself in an interview, and some questions you can expect to turn up. So we're going to close with some very simple tips on what not to do in an interview. Again, we've briefly covered a few ones, arriving late, talking too much, and not knowing enough about the company or the role you're applying for. You should also avoid using your phone during an interview, chewing gum, and don't forget to bring your portfolio. These sound horribly obvious, but interviewers tell us that these happen all of the time. But there's one matter in particular that we wanted to talk about in a little more detail, and that's bad-mouthing previous employers. Here's an anecdote. One Employment for Students member knows someone who interviewed with a company, and not only bad-mouthed his current place of employment, boss and executive directors, but also provided security details, server information, and their colleagues' schedule of events. Needless to say, he was not offered a job. 
bad mouthing employees does not create a sense of camaraderie or loyalty, but tells the interviewer that you have a bad attitude and may be problematic after you leave. There is literally nothing to gain from it, so please don't do it. <laughs> That's it for today. Join us for our fourth episode where we'll be talking about enhancing your employability. Not too sure what that is? Well, check in and you can at least listen to the first two minutes that will be covered in there. Also remember that our last episode will be a Q&A session where we'll answer questions submitted by you guys. So get your burning desires over to us. You still have time to send us your questions either below in the comments or via Twitter at E4S Co UK, on our Facebook page facebook.com forward slash employment for students or email them to us at studentsupport at e4s.co.uk or just let us know what you think or how your day's been. In the meanwhile, check out our website at www.e4s.co.uk for loads of additional job hunting tips and a great selection of student jobs. Thanks for watching and we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.